You know, I told myself I wasn't going to record as much as I used to. <laughs> that it's creeping back up on me. I think I am recording as much as I used to. That's what I promised myself. I'm going to record less. But I think it's creeping back up. But I don't mind. <clears throat> I have to be more comfortable. Though. I've asked my friend to look online. I don't have time to look online. To get another little, a smaller chub chair than the last one I had was a little bit big but this chair it affects my knee as well as my back <laughs> how that is I don't know it's the position that you have to sit in without destroying the computer how it works by banging and knocking and <laughs> all those things oh and there, there's something come up at the head about voice access I only want to talk to you not the voice access on this computer I tell you what technology just does my head in because it starts telling me and coming up on the screen and I don't want to access and activate any voice anything other than what I'm recording <laughs> so now today I'm continuing with the theme of the Bible because the Bible is the most important thing that I do have to record and the Bible in one year I'll be very happy when I reach day 365 because I failed before. I did get along but not as far as I needed to so once that's in the bag I can then I've got a book that the priest is going to give me next week because this week I can't go again the, the guest room's not free in the where I stay housing 21 which is the partner to this they've got them all over the country and you can stay in their guest rooms but that guest room's not free but I will be going on the 24th but I'm going to see the priest on the 22nd and he's going to loan me this book to share on YouTube it's about the what the Protestants have done and comparisons and uh, it'll be interesting because I was a Protestant and I'm a convert, and uh, yes, it, sadly they're not being taught what Jesus taught the apostles now. They're making so many changes, it's absolutely drastic, so I'm fascinated. And I haven't continued yet with the other books that I've started on, but I will be finishing them as well. So I must get on this evening. It is now... 37 minutes past six I'm going to be sharing now with you uh, the Bible in one year day 186 and I'll be reading from 1 Chronicles 18 and 19 and 20 and Proverbs 21 and then from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 13 to 23. So before I begin, I'm going to say one or two prayers before reading Holy Scripture. Sacred Scripture. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Angel sent by God to guide me, be my light and walk beside me. Be my guardian and protect me. On the light paths of life direct me. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you will renew the face of the earth. Lord, by the light of your Holy Spirit, you have taught the hearts of your faithful in that same spirit Help us to relish what is right and always rejoice in your consolation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Act of faith. I accept all that you teach me, Lord, through your church, because your word is true. I believe, Lord. Help my unbelief. An act of hope. I have complete confidence in your promise calling me to eternal life. Give me all the help I need to remain true to you 
Sacred Heart of Jesus, I place all my trust in you. And the little prayer before reading Sacred Scripture. Open my heart, O Holy Spirit, to receive your inspired word. Grant me wisdom to understand what you want to teach me and strength of will to follow wherever you lead. Amen. A reading from the book of 1 Chronicles, chapter 18, and the title is David's Kingdom Established and Extended. After this, David defeated the Philistines and subdued them, and he took Gath and its villages out of the hand of the Philistines. And he defeated Moab, and the Moabites became servants to David and brought tribute. David also defeated Hadadezer, king of Zobar, toward Hamath. As he went to set up his monument at the river Euphrates, and David took from him a thousand chariots, seven thousand horsemen, and twenty thousand foot soldiers. And David hamstrung all the chariot horses, but left enough for a hundred chariots. And when the Syrians of Damascus came to help Hadazer, king of Zobar, David slew 22,000 men of the Syrians. Then David put garrisons in Syria of Damascus, and the Syrians became servants to David and brought tribute. And the Lord gave victory to David wherever he went. And David took the shields of gold, which were carried by the servants of Hadadezer and brought them to Jerusalem. And from Tibhath and from Kun, cities of Hadadezer, David took very much bronze. With it Solomon made the bronze sea and the pillars and the vessels of bronze. When Tou king of Hamath heard, that David had defeated the whole army of Hadadezer, king of Zobar, he sent his son Hador Am to King David to greet him and to con congratulate him because he had fought against Hadadezer and defeated him. For Hadadezer had often been at war with Tou. And he sent all sorts of articles of gold, of silver and of bronze. These also King David dedicated to the Lord, together with the silver and gold, which he had carried off from all the nations, from Edom, Moab, the Ammonites, the Philistines and Amalek. And Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, slew 18,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. And he put garrisons in Edom. And all the Edomites became David's servants. And the Lord gave victory to David wherever he went. The title, David's Administration. So David reigned over all Israel and he administered justice and equity to all his people. And Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was over the army and Jehoshaphat, the son of ah Ahilud, was recorder. And Zadok, the son of Ahitab and Ahimelech, 
the son of Abiathar, were priests, and Shav, Shav, Shavshar was secretary, and Benaniah, the son of Jehoiada, was over the Cherethites and the Pelethites, and David's sons were the chief officials in the service of the king. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of 1 Chronicles, chapter 19. And the title is Defeat of the Ammonites and Arameans. So I'm going to move that out of the way. A reading from 1 Chronicles 19. Now after this, Nahash the king of the Ammonites died, and his son reigned in his stead. And David said, I will deal loyally with Hanun the son of Nahash, for his father dealt loyally with me. So David sent messengers to console him concerning his father. And David's servants came to Hanun in the land of the Ammonites to console him. But the princes of the Ammonites said to Hanun, Do you think, because David has sent comforters to you, that he is honouring your father? Have not his servants come to you to search and to overthrow and to spy out the land? So had, had Hanun took David's servants and shaved them and cut off their garments in the middle of their hips and sent them away. And they departed. When David was told concerning the men, he sent to meet them, for the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, Remain at Jericho until your beards have grown, and then return. When the Ammonites saw that they had made themselves odious to David, Hanun and the Ammonites sent a thousand talents of silver to hire chariots and horsemen from Mesopotamia, from Aramaka, and from Zobar. They hired 32,000 chariots and the king of Maaka with his army who came and encamped before Medibar. And the Ammonites were mustered from their cities and came to battle. When David heard of it, he sent Joab and all the army of the mighty men. And the Ammonites came out and drew up in battle array at the entrance of the city. And the kings who had come were by themselves in the open country. When Joab saw that the battle was set against him both in front and in the rear, he chose some of the picked men of Israel and arrayed them against the Syrians. The rest of his men he put in the charge of Abishai his brother and they were arrayed against the Ammonites. And he said, If the Syrians are too strong for me, then you shall help me. But if the Ammonites are too strong for you, then I will help you. Be of good courage, and let us play the man for our people, and for the cities of our God. And may the Lord do what seems good 
to him. So Joab and the people who were with him drew near before the Syrians for battle, and they fled before him. And when the Ammonites saw that the Syrians fled, they likewise fled before Abishai, Joab's brother, and entered the city. Then Joab came to Jerusalem. But when the Syrians saw that they had been defeated by Israel, they sent messengers and brought out the Syrians who were beyond the Euphrates with Shophash, the commander of the army of Hadadezer at their head. And when it was told David, he gathered all Israel together and crossed the Jordan and came to them and drew up his forces against them. And when David set the battle in array against the Syrians, they fought with him. And the Syrians fled before Israel. And David slew of the Syrians the men of seven thousand chariots and forty thousand foot soldiers, and killed also Shophash, the commander of their army. And when the servants of Hadadezer saw that they had been defeated by Israel, they made peace with David and became subject to him. So the Syrians were not willing to help the Ammonites any more. The word of the Lord. So before I read chapter 20, I have to turn off soup in my kitchen. I can re remember I've left it on and it's too high. I'm sorry about this natural break. <laughs> My apologies for that, but I could smell it. And if I'd left it, it uh, who knows what might happen? It's uh, it was on half, but it it wouldn't. I know I've got a lot more reading to do here, so I thought I'd better just turn it off. So sorry about that. I'm now going to proceed with the next chapter of One Chronicles. Chapter 20, excuse me, my nose is troubling. A reading from chapter 20 and the title is Siege and Capture of Rabbah. In the spring of the year, the time when kings go forth to battle, Joab led out the army and ravaged the country of the Ammonites and came and besieged Rabbah. But David remained at Jerusalem and Joab smote Rabbah and overthrew it and David took the crown of their king from his head. He found that it weighed a talent of gold, and in it was a precious stone, and it was placed on David's head, and he brought forth the spoil of the city, a very great amount. And he brought forth the people who were in it, and set them to labour with saws and iron picks and axes. Thus David did to all the cities of the Ammonites, then David and all the people returned to Jerusalem. The next title, Exploits Against the Philistines. And after this, there arose war with the Philistines at Giza. Then Sibi Bikai, the Hushathite, slew Sipiah 
who was one of the descendants of the giants and the Philistines, were subdued. And there was again war with the Philistines, and Elhanan, the son of Jair, slew Lami, the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, the shaft of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. And there was again war at Gath, where there was a man of great stature, who had six fingers on each hand, and six toes on each foot, twenty-four in number, and he also was descended from the giants. And when he taunted Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shimea, David's brother, slew him. These were descended from the giants in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. The word of the Lord. So I'm now going to turn over to the next reading, which will be from Proverbs 21. I like Proverbs. Okay. A reading from the book of Proverbs, chapter 21. The king's heart is a stream of water in the hand of the Lord. He turns it wherever he will. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes. But the Lord weighs the heart. To do righteousness and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Haughty eyes and a proud heart, the lamp of the wicked are sin. The plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance, but everyone who is hasty comes only to want. The getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a fleeting vapour and a snare of death. The violence of the wicked will sweep them away because they refuse to do what is just. The way of the guilty is crooked, but the conduct of the pure is right. It is better to live in a corner of the housetop than in a house shared with a contentious woman. The soul of the wicked desires evil. His neighbour finds no mercy in his eyes. When a scoffer is punished, the simple becomes wise. When a man, a wise man is instructed, he gains knowledge. The righteous observes the house of the wicked. The wicked are cast down to ruin. He who closes his ear to the cry of the poor will himself cry out and not be heard. A gift in secret averts anger and a bride in the bosom Strong wrath, a bribe. When justice is done, it is a joy to the righteous, but dismay to evildoers.
A man who wanders from the way of understanding will rest in the assembly of the dead. He who loves pleasure will be a poor man. He who loves wine and oil will not be rich. The wicked is a ransom for the righteous and the faithless for the upright. It is better to live in a desert land than with a contentious and fretful woman. Oops, my nose, sorry. Precious treasure remains in a wise man's dwelling, but a foolish man devours it. He who pursues righteousness and kindness will find life and honour. A wise man scales the city of the mighty and brings down the stronghold in which they trust. He who keeps his mouth and his tongue keeps himself out of trouble. Scoffer is the name of the proud, haughty man who acts with arrogant pride. The desire of the sluggard kills him for his hands refuse to labour. All day long the wicked covets, but the righteous gives and does not hold back. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. How much more when he brings it with evil intent? A false witness will perish, but the word of a man who hears will endure. A wicked man puts on a bold face, but an upright man considers his ways. No wisdom, no understanding, no counsel can avail against the Lord. The horse is made ready for the day of battle, but the victory belongs to the Lord. Thanks be to God. That is the word of the Lord. Now we're going to move forward to the Gospel, the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew 2. 12 to 23. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The title is The Escape to Egypt. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there till I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfil what the Lord had spoken by the prophets. Out of Egypt have I called my son. The next title, The Massacre of the innocents. 
Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, was in a furious rage and he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and in all that region who were two years old or under according to the time which he had ascertained from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled because they were no more. The next title, The Return from Egypt. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Rise and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the child's life are dead. And he rose and took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus reigned over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there, and being warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled. He shall be called a Nazarene. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'll just read the prayer after reading sacred scripture. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for the word you have spoken to me through the treasure of the scripture. Make these words a living reality in my life, a constant guide, a lamp for my feet, and a light to my path. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, guide us. Work in us with your gifts, so that your presence may be shown, and we may serve in different ways for the good of all. Spirit of the living God, you alone search out everything, even the depths of God's intentions. Remain with us always, that we may know all that God has freely bestowed on us, that we may rightly judge and value all things. Lead me, O Holy Spirit, that I may put to death all sinful thoughts and actions. Lead me, O Holy Spirit, that I may live as God's child. Lead me, O Holy Spirit, that I may be free from the slavery to sin. Lead me, O Holy Spirit, that I may pray and cry out, Abba, Father. Lead me, O Holy Spirit, that I may possess the inheritance of grace that awaits me. Thank you so much for listening. May God bless you and heal you. I'm sending you his peace in abundance. And may you always be happy and joyful in the Lord. God bless the rest of your day, evening or morning. Thank you.